afternoon. This is indeed the day that the Lord has made, and he calls us to rejoice and to be glad in it. Today we come to celebrate the life of Miss Aura May Darby. At this time, we'll have our opening hymn by a choir.
Good afternoon. Please hear the word of the Lord from Psalms 27, verse 1, Old Testament scripture reading, and then the New Testament scripture reading from 2 Timothy, chapter 4. I will start at verse 6 and read through verse 8. Hear the word of the Lord. David says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Second Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8, the Apostle Paul writes, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I believe Sister Ora would give voice and say, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who loved his appearing. May the word of God bring you comfort today. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this day that we have never seen a day that we have never lived and one that we will never live again. We thank you for your goodness and your grace, for your loving kindness and new mercies every morning. Thank you for every good and perfect gift that comes from you and for the privilege to come to your throne of grace where your word says we find help in time of need. So, God, I pray for those who are under the sound of my voice today that you would help them in their time of need. Help them in their time of sorrow and grief and mourning. Help them in their time of weakness. You promise that where we are weak, you become our strength. You promise that when we are sorrowful, you will be our joy. You promise that you would lift up our heads and Give us a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So I lift up this family before you today of your daughter, Sister Aura. I pray for Sister Vera and Brother Vincent and her family, extended family, community, her sisterhood family, that you would bless them all in their time of grief. We thank you that your word is true, that weeping does endure for a night, but joy really does come in the morning. So I thank you that you are everything that they need for such a time as this. And we thank you and praise you for your daughter, Aura, for how many she loved and the friendships she made and the sisterhood that she uh, was born and birthed into and grew into and all that she did, her service to humanity, how to be a friend. We thank you that on this side, we will have suffering and pain, but that she now knows a place where there is no more weeping, no more crying, no more sorrow, no more pain. So God, just continue to be God Almighty in their lives and all who loved your daughter. Continue to strengthen them and be their peace and comfort in the days to come. And even now we say your name is still worthy to be praised. In the name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Amen.
Oh, yeah. 
Good afternoon. I will be sharing acknowledgments received today in honor of Sister Aura Mae Darby. May God who sees your grieving heart and hears each tender prayer be ever near to give you peace and keep you in his care. Dear Vera and Benson, we are so very sorry for your loss of Aura. May God give you peace in knowing that she is now ushering, she is now resting in his peace. Love you, Maria and Jamal. In memory of your loved one, as you walk through this time of loss, may your heart be assured that the Lord walks with you to bring comfort, peace, and love with sympathy and prayers. Aura touched so many lives, and her loss will be felt deeply by many with love from Esther. First Baptist Church, Centralia, Virginia, to the family of the late Miss Aura May Darby. The pastor, Dr. Wilson E.B. Shannon, and the officers and members of the First Baptist Church of Centralia join you in your sorrow as you bear the loss of your loved one and our sister in Christ, Miss Aura Darby, whom God in his infinite mercy and wisdom called home on Friday, May 13th, to eternal rest. Take comfort in remembering the love and the joy Aura gave to you, her family, her loved ones, and friends as you shared your lives together. We knew Aura long before she joined our fellowship as she would worship with us whenever she visited her cousin Connie. Once she moved to the area and joined us, Aura became active with the Golden Fleet Ministry and was very supportive of the Sisterhood Ministry, always had an encouraging word along with her contagious smile. The First Baptist Church family especially offers its prayers and condolences to our faithful and dedicated members, her cousin, Deaconess Connie Smith, and her husband, Deacon Daryl Smith, their sons, Greg and Justin. We direct you to the Holy Spirit, the Great Comforter, and extend to you our love, understanding, and support in this troubling time. God will supply the strength you need to adjust to losing someone who meant so much to you. In his wisdom, he has done what is best for Sister Darby, and he also has done what is best for you. Although you may not understand, he never makes a mistake. We know God will continue to comfort you and bless you during this time of bereavement. We shall continue to keep you in our prayers. Sorrowfully yours, Dr. Wilson E.B. Shannon, pastor. First Mount Zion Baptist Church, Dumfries, Virginia. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. The leadership and members of First Mount Zion Baptist Church join me in offering our deepest condolences to Sister Vera Blake on the passing of her sister, to Brother Benson Blake on the passing of his aunt, Sister Aura May Darby. Sister Darby was a member of First Mount Zion for nearly seven years. We appreciated her involvement and support of the ministry during her short time with us. She enjoyed being in worship and exuded a loving spirit and bright smile. We mourn with you over her transition, but also rejoice, knowing she is now experiencing the joy of her salvation as she worships her Lord and Savior in heaven. Vera and Benson, as you celebrate Sister Darby's legacy, I pray you will be comforted as you remember her through God's promise of eternity and know how much she loved each of you. Our hearts and prayers are with you all. Humbly submitted, Dr. Luke Etorian, pastor. The family expresses their sincere appreciation for the gracious acts of kindness received. Their hearts have been encouraged by your generosity, love, and your presence today. May you be ever blessed in the same special way in which you have blessed them. Please join me now in the silent reading of the obituary for Sister Aura May Darby.
My dearest family and friends, I had to go to the Father above. My time on earth was done. Please know without regret, my eternal reward has come. Be at peace for my home going. Celebrate my journey with joy. Remember my friends will meet once again as heavenly saints once more. God bless you all. Good afternoon. I'm Connie Smith, Aura's cousin, and I'm honored to share some family memories with you today. Aura and I grew up in the same hometown, and I've known her since elementary school. Most people from Warsaw called her Aura May, which was a distinct giveaway if ever we were out somewhere and we heard someone call her by her first and middle names we knew immediately it was someone from Warsaw. Warsaw is a small town, and we were growing up, when we were growing up, families spent a lot of time together. We had family neighborhoods. We went to the same schools, same neighborhood churches, and regularly visited each other's homes. Our social lives had a little more depth. We went to basketball games and football games, and to some of the dances, and we hung out at the Tasty Freeze after each of these games. When we decided to venture out to, say, a concert in Richmond, in order to get our parents' approval, the cousins would get together and strategize on which parents would say yes the quickest and work our way up to the hardest, which was usually my father. We thought he would be influenced by the other yes votes. It actually worked sometimes. After high school, we scattered, going off to college, the military, or finding jobs and homes in other parts of the country. Or I went to Hampton Institute. Following graduation, she moved to Washington, DC, living with her grandmother, but still surrounded by many relatives from Warsaw in the DMV area. She loved family gatherings and would attend as many as she could fit into any given year. While staying connected was certainly one of her strong traits, she also had many hidden talents. As Donna said, she made the best chicken salad you've ever eaten. She couldn't come to many of our homes for a visit without making it. She was the family historian. She knew how we were all related, the Woods, the Darbys, the Corbins, from many generations back and could remember everyone's names. She was also known for having a great memory. She was an entrepreneur. She was part of a successful business named T. Rose Connection in partnership with her sister Dodie and three of her sorority sisters. Her area of expertise was creating all kinds of unique cards and stationaries. She had a quick wit. Once she was visiting me in Richmond, and I was very pregnant with my oldest son, Greg. We were riding around downtown, and a guy pulled up beside us at a light, attempting to flirt with us. Aura looked at me and said, show him your stomach. <laughs> we both let out a big laugh as we left the light, Thelma and Louise style, heading down the street. She was passionate about her work. This included the job she had or whatever project she had undertaken. This was especially true when she was chapter president or making a family photo book for a special occasion. It had to be perfect before she would release it. She loved to travel. She frequently traveled to commemorate special occasions with family and friends and on AKA business. 
but she also had the luxury to travel for pleasure to many exotic places. One of my favorite trips with her was her 60th birthday in Las Vegas. What happened there will stay there. Aura was an excellent softball player. She played in high school and in a DC league, and she, we would come up to visit her and go to her games. She played the positions of first base and pitcher, and her skills were definitely impressive. She was very independent, a trait I believe she inherited from her dear mother, whom I always admired. She would ask your opinion and listen to advice, but ultimately the decision was hers to make. I also learned to respect that about her. <clears throat> On a personal note, Aura was my mentor, and more like a sister than a cousin. She influenced me to become an AKA, and she's been present for me in more ways than I can count, as I'm sure she has been for so many members of our family. I'll always have special memories that she was the coordinator of my wedding and the announcer for my son's wedding. She was the photographer for both of my son's very first baby pictures. I went to my first boule with her, and the list goes on and on. When she moved to Chester, Virginia almost six years ago, she lived less than five miles from me, and she adapted easily into our family and the community. She loved and spoiled my grandsons as she had done with my sons, like they were her own. She went to their soccer games, t-ball games, birthday parties, and joined us for family get-togethers. We went to the same hairstylist and nail salon, and if you know anything about Aura, she always had to have her hair and her nails picture perfect. Our lives were truly interconnected. At our church, First Baptist Centralia, she became a watch care member and joined the Golden Fleet Senior Ministry. She enjoyed taking excursions and lunching with the ladies of the Golden Fleet and would share every detail when she returned home. When health concerns prompted her to slow down a bit, she still made a concerted effort to participate in sorority and Hampton University alumni meetings, to travel with Benson and Vera on their annual trip to St. Thomas, and have occasional dinner dates with her posse Marsha, Donna, and Sherry. She looked forward to visits from family and friends, especially her friend Esther, where they would try out new restaurants in Richmond and catch up on life. Aura loved life and lived it to the fullest, which translated into sharing it with family and friends. We rarely spoke when she didn't tell me about something that Gio did or how Benson had shown her how to cast church services on her TV. She was super excited about upcoming plans for travel with her Gamma Theta Soror Adrian. In her core was her love of family, friends, and Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority, all of which were clearly reflected in her home, her conversations, and her actions. As I close, I'd like to share some dialogue from a recent episode of one of my favorite shows, This Is Us. The main character, Rebecca, is dying, and as she is taking her last breath, her spirit self says to her guardian angel, this is all very sad, isn't it? The end. The guardian angel responds, I don't know, he said. I think it's all based on your perspective. If something makes you sad when it ends, it must have been pretty wonderful when it was happening. Aura May Darby, you were someone pretty wonderful. <laughs> Greetings. What do you say when your best bud, soror, posse member, business partner, travel roommate, and Capricorn soulmate 
is not just a phone call away. There are no words. So you try to move through the despair and profound sadness and focus on the 30 plus years of an extraordinary friendship with an extraordinary person. Or had several terms of endearment, which you've heard um, this morning among her sister circle and family. The bag lady, Chico's fashionista, Starbucks snob, OD, Aura May, Sora Aura, and the dreaded Olivia. All the nicknames were reflective of her multifaceted characteristics and infectious personality. If you knew Aura, as Connie and everyone has said, she embraced life, had many talents, and was very vocal, I wanna say opinionated, but I'm trying to be nice, about her likes and dislikes. There is not enough time, as everyone said, to share all of my stories around this phenomenal person. So I compiled some of the top things that I think that was the essence, and I think some of you um, have heard some of these things. First, her coffee. No milk, only sugar-free half and half. Putting milk in her coffee brought out the dreaded Olivia. Shopping, or invented the phrase shop till you drop. Hampton, as you know, those gamma thetans, according to Aura, the best HBCU and her forever home by the sea. Her phone, we all know Aura loved to talk. Need I say more? And those road trips, planes, trains, automobiles, and cruise ships from sorority conferences to around the world with Sister Vera and nephew Benson, she racked up those frequent flyer miles. Making that list at number six, as Connie said, graphic designs. Aura loved designing and creating personalized cards and keepsakes for friends and family. And the photos, I think we've um, seen those, and thank goodness that Benson is also followed in her footsteps with being that photographer. Her love of photography captured all of life's milestones, and she left us behind an extensive catalog of treasured memories. Sports. Aura was a Uber Ravens and Orioles fan. For me, as an Uber Cincinnati Bengals fan, myself, I will always tre tre um, cherish our AFC North rivalry. Rounding out that list at number nine, her beloved Alpha, Kappa Alpha, the sisterhood, the posse, Gamma Theta, and Xi Zeta Omega was her passion. Ending with what we all know was the wind beneath her wings, her friends, her family, Vera, Dodie, Connie, and Benson, loving them was her superpower. I am forever grateful for being adopted as Cousin Marcia and being part of Aura's loving family. Oh, and I will always be there for you. God bless me richly with our phenomenal friendship full of unconditional love, boundless laughter, and fierce loyalty. Rest easy, my friend. And don't boss Dodie around and tell her how to be an angel. Facing things you never had 
to go through but when you think you can't go on just know the night gives way to the break of dawn and your weeping may endure for a night but joy will come in the morning light and your friends they don't seem to understand instead of help they endure all all alone you stand but when your day But joy will come in the morning light. In the morning light, there's joy unspeakable. In the morning light, there's peace forever. Though the tears may stream and your strength may fade, know that Jesus is there to ease the pain, and your joy will come in the morning light. tears may stream and your strength may fade know that Jesus is there to ease the pain and your joy will come in the morning light in the morning light oh yeah your joy will come in the morning
not meant for me to start singing. So I want to take a moment and ask us to do just a little bit of reflecting. How does one how does one live such a rich life? How does one live such a rich life and then not live a very extensive life? Because what we have come to understand is that 68 years of living is really not a long life. But within those 68 years of living, one can live a very rich and fulfilling life. We often think about longevity as being that thing that qualifies a good life. Longevity does not always qualify living a good life because someone can live to be 80 or 90 and just have a very miserable life. And then there are those who can live to be 50, 60, or 68 and live a very rich and fulfilling life. And then you may ask me, well, how is that done? It's done because you have the appropriate and the right perspective. And you understand what is important, which Aura understood what was important. But then it starts with, I like to think, a spiritual component in having that spiritual perspective in you helps with everything else. So we go back to Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? There is so much in this one verse of scripture that if you and I chose to embrace it would be so liberating for each of our lives. The Lord is my light and my salvation. In other words, the Lord is the essence of my being. Who in whatever I am or whatever I will become, whatever I will experience in life, it is because the Lord is my light and my salvation. He is the one who guides me. He is the one who protects me. He is the one who undergirds me. He is the one who gives me the strength that I need in order to make it in life, and there's nothing about life that would intimidate me, that would cause me to fear, or that would cause me to be afraid. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Is there an individual? Is there a person? Is there an organization? Is there some kind of infirmity that I should fear? I'm not afraid of anything because of who leads me and who guides me. The Lord is the strength of my life. He gives me the ability. He gives me the strength. He gives me the certainty to do whatever I need to do and go wherever I want to go. The Lord is the strength of my life. I can do whatever I want to do. I can become whatever I want to become. 
I'm not intimidated. I'm not afraid. I'm not hindered by any external forces. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Do you not know that some people are neglected of certain experiences in life because they fear? They fear to move on an opportunity because they don't know what's on the other side. What we try to do as human beings, we want to see what's on the other side before, before we decide to make a move. Sometimes it, it is required of us to simply move out. And that is what Miss Aura did. I was reading through the obituary. One of the places that I would like to go uh, and visit I would like to go to Abu Dhabi. You know, uh, that's on that's that's on my bucket list of places to go. Um, I just haven't figured out how to get there, so you, you have to help me figure out how to get there. But that's on my that's on my bucket list, and I know that's a long flight, so I had to be prepared for it. But when when you read through the obituary. And when I listened uh, to Miss Connie speak, Aura May Darby live a very fulfilled life and experienced so much about life. And then when I asked you to do some reflecting, how, how are you doing with your life? Are you fulfilling those goals and aspirations that you have for your life? Are you doing, are you doing the things that you want to do in life? Or are you allowing something or someone to hold you back? She lived she lived a very fulfilled life, had a lot of wonderful experiences in life. And, 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 and it causes me to think, and hopefully it causes you to think, am, are we really doing and living a fulfilled life or are we just being held back not by someone else or are we allowing someone to hold us back or are we allowing ourselves to hold us back and we should never look back on, a, on life and say I wish and say that I wish I had I wish I had done this or oh, I wish I had done that. I wish I had gone there. Particularly when the resources are available for you to do this or to do that or to go here or to go there. Aura allows us to see that you can. That you can do this that you can do that, that you can go here, or that you can go there. And then she teaches us that life, life has a way of saying be ready for whatever. Then we go to Paul's valedictory speech. And he says, I have fought the good fight, I have kept the faith. I have finished the race. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness 
which the Lord, the righteous judge, would give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. This is cause for reflection. And when we began to reflect, will we be able to say as or said in our own life, life was pretty good to me. And I was pretty good to life. We had that kind of companionship where we experienced some wonderful things. And then there are things that overtake us where we didn't do that kind of reflecting. Did she live a good life? From what I know, she did indeed. She loved life. She experienced life. She experienced life with family. She experienced a good life with friends. She was a stellar professional person. And then, obviously, she was one who loved her sorority. When you look at your life, and when the sun is about to set, on your life and on my life, on each of our lives, are we able to say that we fought the good fight? That we really enjoyed life and we lived the way that God would have us to live and do the things that he would allow us to do and go to places where he would allow us to go and have the kind of relationships I still want to know what went on in Vegas. Yeah. But think about it. When you look at her life, she lived a very rich and fulfilling life. And she touched so many people in so many ways. And she was endeared to special people also. You know, what you learn, I, and this is, this is one of my side trips that I take sometimes when I'm speaking. Uh, everybody can't go with you where you're going. You know, it, you know, some, you know, you called her the bag lady. Sometimes some, some folks dropped out of that bag because they couldn't go. And the reason why they couldn't go is that they couldn't handle the trip, and then some folks just talk too much. They can't keep nothing to themselves. They talk too much. Folk who talk too much, you got to be careful how you hang out with them, okay? She fought the good fight. She finished the race. She's now received her eternal, her eternal reward. And for all who knew her and all who walked in a relationship with her, treasure those moments, treasure those memories, laugh often, cry sometime, reflect and grow and continue to become as she became. So then when your moments of adversity come your way, and moments of adversity will come each of our ways, when they come, just remember that the Lord is the strength of your life. Remember that the Lord is the strength of your life. Well, Miss R, you fought a good fight. You finished the race. You kept the faith. And now you are experiencing your eternal reward. This is the word of the Lord. God bless you, Aura May Darby. Amen.
At this time, we will have our committal because the interment will take place tomorrow in Warsaw, Virginia. Ms. Ames. And now, to the mercies of Almighty God, we commend the spirit of our departed sister and commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection at the last day when those who died in the Lord shall be raised to eternal glory and an endless life of joy and peace with God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray. We're grateful to you, dear God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you so very much for the life of Aura May Darby, for her influence, for her friendship, for her compassion, and for the love that she shared with so many. We thank you for allowing her to be your daughter and we thank you for welcoming her into your eternal presence and for those of us who remain we pray for your strength and we pray for your comfort we pray that we might be reminded of the words of scripture that you would never leave us nor forsake us so when our hearts are heavy be our source of strength and remind us that as we reflect upon the relationships that we share with Aura, that every now and then there's a smile and even maybe a moment of laughter as well. For you are the great giver of joy and strength. And we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.